Hello and welcome to BBC Newsline. Relations between most of the five main parties and the Secretary of State are said to be at an all-time low after a meeting ended in recriminations this morning. Sinn Féin accused Karen Bradley of treating some sections of society with utter contempt, but the Ulster Unionist Party accused Sinn Féin of belligerence. Our political correspondent Gareth Gordon has more. These were the talks which weren't really talks. So what were they? Well, I've always been clear that this was a briefing for the parties on the bill that will become an act of Parliament next week, so that they can understand what the debates were in Parliament last week and this week in the House of Lords, and, and so that they can see now that it is going to be an act of Parliament in the next few days, what that will mean. That's what I'm going to go and do now, because I want to get those parties in a room together and, and really go through with them how this, this act will deliver for them. The big idea seemed to be that the parties were all to sit around the same table together. It didn't quite work. We attended a meeting this morning with the Secretary of State and the other political parties to establish if there was basis for a going forward with a rights-based society with accountable governance for all. Unfortunately, that was not the case. It's quite clear that the British government are treating large sections of this society with utter and complete contempt. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, he was off. It did not get any better. We saw complete belligerence from Sinn Féin that actually now says to us or questions their validity as whether they want to be part of a meaningful talks process at this point in time. What we seem to get from the briefing from the Secretary of State today is she wants consensus around what could be a talks process. There wasn't even consensus this morning as to what that meeting was. This has been an embarrassing day for the Secretary of State. It is a bad day for politics here, and all the while the public are even more uh, uh, angry at our lack of, a, uh, of a, an ability to actually get things done here. Uh, I think this was a total waste of time today. It was not just a pointless exercise, but I would argue it was actually counterproductive in that I think that relationships between parties and indeed with the Secretary of State are possibly now at an all-time low. Only one party came to the Secretary of State's defence. My understanding was that it was to be a briefing and that's precisely what we were given was a briefing. Ultimately, the people of Northern Ireland expect the political parties in Northern Ireland to sort their problems out and it's not for Karen Bradley or for any other party to talk Sinn Féin out of the corner which they've painted themselves into. Whatever the Secretary of State hoped to achieve from this meeting, it appears to have achieved the opposite. And if we have really reached the bottom of the barrel, perhaps there's only one way it can go. But don't bet on it. The road back to Stormont maybe just got longer. Garth Gordon, BBC Newsline. Thanks very much. We're going to go straight to uh, Sinn Féin's news conference at Stormont. They've just begun speaking at the podium. had what I would describe as a, a very direct meeting with uh, Dominic Rabb. We have again set out for him in the plainest of terms the necessity for a backstop that protects the basic uh, economic, social and polit political well-being of the island of Ireland. We have reminded him that he and his government last December signed up to that, understood that the north of Ireland is a particular uh, scenario with a need for a bespoke and particular solution. Uh, we have told him that he and his government are acting in bad faith, that they have stepped back from commitments that they made to protect the Good Friday Agreement in all of its parts, to ensure no hardening of the border on our island and to ensure no loss of rights for citizens. We have told him that that is wholly unacceptable and we have left him in no doubt that the view right across Irish politics north and south with the exception of the DUP is that we need to act in a responsible way, in a way that recognises the real jeopardy and damage that Brexit can uh, and will do to our economy, uh, potentially to our peace agreements. And we have told him that to, to offer up anything short of an operable, enduring backstop is to act recklessly and in a way that is entirely unacceptable. Could you give you any indication of what they are prepared to sign up to on the backstop? 
He has uh, simply reiterated the position of the Prime Minister that 95% of the work is done but 5% remains. Uh, their position is that everything is agreed except for the protocol and the needs of Ireland and we have made very clear to him that uh, the needs of Ireland will not be set aside. Uh, they are not a footnote, they are not a matter of detail, they are essential to, uh, to agree any withdrawal agreement and indeed any future relationship and we have reminded him that the backstop is necessary for any withdrawal agreement to be landed on uh, and indeed as a prerequisite for any future relationship. Peter Smith, thank you news. How have you responded to Dominic Duff's visit in Northern Ireland today? The way he's gone about it, I know there's been some criticism of how he approached Northern Ireland today and how did you find him then in the meeting behind closed doors? Well, it was very much a flying visit. Um, it's, it's curious the way in which uh, Tories seek to uh, visit this part of Ireland under cover and uh, very short visits. I, I, I think that he was simply going through the motions. Uh, this strikes me very much as a box ticking exercise. Um, let's face it, the, the whole Brexit debate took place across the water with no mind uh, or no consideration for Ireland, for our peace agreements, for our economy, for our social and political needs. So it's very much he's a day tripper to this part uh, of Ireland. Of course, he's, he's most welcome to visit, uh, but what we need now is not box ticking exercises or fly by night visits. We need answers, we need leadership, and that means an operable, enduring backstop. The last time that the, one of the conferences took place, we had Philip Hammond over to do a tour of Bombardier. Do, do you have that view? Or? Do you want to comment on that? Well, I think that um, just even to reflect on the previous question, if you look at Don McGrath's visit today or Karen Bradley's visit yesterday, these are obligatory visits. They come along, they meet certain people, they choose who they want to meet, they come in with no notice. Um, and I think that's fairly reflective of how the British government treats the people here. Blatant disregard, disrespect, time and time again. And there's plenty of evidence to, to support that over the course of the last number of years. The Intergovernmental Conference will meet today. And if we're all very clear that there's three reasons why we don't have an executive and assembly up and running. That is the DUP sponsored RHA, the DUP supported Brexit, or the Supply and Conference Day, which they have with the Tories. Those are the three fundamentals as to why we don't have an institution up and running. So the Intergovernmental Conference has the ability to remove the obstacles to the institutions being restored. It has the ability, it is within the confines of the Good Friday Agreement, and the two governments could actually deliver citizens' rights here because they are co guarantors of the Good Friday Agreement. They have responsibility for equality and for rights for citizens. And what we're looking to is the Irish government to hold the British government's feet to the fire on this issue because we all know that the Intergovernmental Conference and the British government, or the British government itself, has not moved because they're in hock to the DUP. They can't move an inch without asking the DUP, and that is the fundamental problem we have here. So the Irish government have a responsibility to put the pressure on the British government to deliver citizens' rights here and to, to deliver on what Taoiseach said last year when he said no citizen in the north will ever be left behind again. We've also, we've also reminded Mr Rabb that uh, despite all their theatrics and the melodramatic language, uh, there are already checks in the Irish Sea between our two islands. And once uh, a case of BSE is reported, as happened recently in Scotland, Fortress Ireland emerges for entirely rational reasons because it's about protecting the, the national herd, the herd across the island. It's about protecting jobs. In other words, practical, workable, real life politics kicks in. Mr. Rabb doesn't live in Ireland. Uh, the Tories are not elected, don't have a mandate from any part of Ireland. The people of the north of Ireland voted to remain, not to Brexit. Uh, and it is absolutely essential that in a pragmatic and an enduring way that the economic and political rights and needs of people across the island are protected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, as we were, uh, any sense of optimism from what Arlene Foster was saying, quoted as saying earlier, uh, has just been... Um, well, and truly uh, put aside. That was Marilyn MacDonald, the president of Sinn Féin, with uh, the deputy president, uh, Michelle O'Neill. Uh, very scathing about Dominic Raab and his visit. Uh, 
uh, he was described by uh, Mary Lynn MacDonald as a day tripper. Uh, this was a fly by night visit, she said. Uh, he's simply going through the motions, and this is a box ticking exercise. Accused him also of uh, theatrics. So um, they were emphasizing once again the need for an enduring backstop, uh, making the point just there that. Uh, when push comes to shove, uh, which it did over the recent BSC scare in Scotland, there is already what is in effect a border between uh, the UK and Northern Ireland. Uh, I just want to show you a tweet um, that asks a few moments. Uh, this is Arlene Foster uh, at that meeting with Dominic Rabb. Good to have him in Belfast, she says. Northern Ireland must not be put in a position which undermines the constitutional or economic integrity of the UK. Uh, she has reiterated uh, her party's position to any additional checks between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom uh, and the delegation you can see there North Belfast MP Nigel Dodds, MEP Diane Dodds and the South Belfast MLA Christopher Salford. Um, she said this is a party of an ongoing part of an ongoing range of meetings we have delighted he's come to Northern Ireland uh, and said her party has made it clear to Mr. Rabb that from the constitutional point of view but also from an economic point of view it's very important that as we uh, as well as not having any customs barriers, we cannot have any regulatory barriers. Uh, it would appear, frankly, very little change in the positions of either Sinn Féin or DUP, but we'll uh, hear from Dominic Raab, uh, see what he has to say in the next half or hour or so. We're expecting a news conference, and if, of course, the DUP haven't uh, spoken publicly yet, we will take you to Stormont if they do. Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab has visited Northern Ireland for talks with the DUP. In the past hour, leader Arlene Foster said she hoped a deal on the deadlocked Irish border question was close. But Jim Fain have accused Mr Raab of making a flying visit and acting like a thief in the night by not listening to the concerns of local people living on the border. Let's go to our Ireland correspondent Chris Page, who's at Stormont for us. So is there any cause for optimism here? Doesn't really seem so, Simon. No, Dominic Rabb has arrived here at Stormont. He's been meeting uh, the local parties. He drove to Belfast after uh, speaking to business people on the border about this issue, which remains the major sticking point in the Brexit negotiations. The Irish border backstop. How to guarantee there'll be no new controls on the border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic under any circumstances. So the parties have, uh, in the last few minutes, been coming out and having their say here uh, at Stormont. First of all, we heard from the Democratic Unionist Party leader Arlene Foster. I hope that we are close to a deal that can work for Northern Ireland. That's what we want to see. We want to see uh, an exit from the European Union that is sustainable, that is one that works for everyone in the UK and indeed that works for our neighbours in the Republic of Ireland as well. Uh, nobody in the Democratic Unionist Party wants to see a hard border. What we want to see is a sustainable exit from the European Union, but one that is rooted in the reality of the constitutional position of Northern Ireland, which of course is within the United Kingdom. So the Democratic Unionists, Theresa May's parliamentary allies, of course, setting out again their red line that the Brexit deal cannot result in anything that separates Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK, cannot result in anything that means goods need to be checked between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Sinn Féin, of course, have a very different perspective uh, on all this. They're passionately uh, opposed to Brexit. Here's what the Sinn Féin leader, Mary Lou Macdonald, has been saying to reporters. Well, it was very much a flying visit. Um, it's, it's curious the way in which uh, Tories seek to uh, visit this part of Ireland under cover and uh, very short visits. I, I, I think that he was simply going through the motions. Uh, this strikes me very much as a box ticking exercise. Um, let's face it, the, the whole Brexit debate took place across the water with no mind uh, or no consideration for Ireland, for our peace agreements, for our economy, for our social and political needs. So it's very much he's a day tripper to this part uh, of Ireland. Of course, he's, he's most welcome to visit. Uh, but what we need now is not box ticking exercises or fly by night visits. We need answers, we need leadership, and that means an operable, enduring backstop. Amanda? 
Uh, Mary Lee MacDonald also said that Dominic Raab had told her that 95% of the Brexit deal was done. The remaining 5% was all about Ireland, all about the border, and that is proving very difficult uh, to resolve. The EU say that the backstop should mean that Northern Ireland would, if the border issue can't be resolved through a free trade deal, stay in the customs union and the single market. The British government, backed by the DUP, say that wouldn't be acceptable because it would lead to what the DUP say they don't want under any circumstances, and that is uh, some new kind of trade barrier between Northern Ireland and England, Scotland and Wales. So really no sign uh, of a breakthrough. British and Irish ministers also meeting in Dublin this afternoon and Irish sources there have been saying they didn't expect uh, Britain to bring forward any new proposals uh, on uh, Brexit. But what both sides do agree on very much is that there's an increased uh, sense of urgency. Remember the EU saying, and they're very much sticking to this, that if there isn't a deal on the Irish border and a backstop, well then there won't be a Brexit withdrawal agreement at all. Chris Page at Stormont, thank you very much. Now let's return uh, to the issues in Northern Ireland where the Brexit Secretary Dominic Rubb has been visiting for talks with the DUP. He's been speaking in the last few minutes. This is what he had to say. We made it very clear we would never sign up to anything that would threaten the economic, the constitutional, let alone the territorial uh, integrity of the United Kingdom. Uh, we're engaged in negotiations. I need to protect the integrity of those negotiations. But we're confident we can get a good deal, good for all corners of the United Kingdom and good for every community here in Northern Ireland. But you haven't ruled out any new regulatory checks of any shape or form on goods coming from Northern Ireland into Great Britain? I'm not going to conduct a running commentary on the negotiations, but we've been very clear that all the business considerations, whether it's the east-west trade or the north-south trade, must be protected. We want frictionless trade with the EU and we want to preserve the internal market within the United Kingdom. And there's a win-win here uh, for the UK and the whole of the UK, but also to make sure that we've got a good relationship going forward with our European friends and partners. So I'm just not 100% clear have any new regulatory checks from Great Britain into Northern Ireland been definitively ruled out? Look, we've, we are engaged in the negotiation process. Uh, we have made it very clear that whether it's the uh, customs regime uh, for the UK as a whole or the wider economic integrity of the UK as a whole, we will not allow any proposals to be accepted that would jeopardise that. And that's the crucial thing here. Of course, we want to maintain frictionless trade with our EU partners, but the internal market within the UK is absolutely crucial too. They're not binary choices. We want to preserve both and also enhance and increase our opportunities for global trade, which will be good for the UK and good for Northern Ireland too. That was Dominic Raab speaking in the last few minutes. Uh, fair to say, as we heard from Sinn Féin, they are not impressed by what he's had to say. The Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab has been visiting Northern Ireland for talks with politicians and business leaders there. The DUP leader Arlene Foster said she hoped a deal on the deadlocked Irish border question was close, but Sinn Féin accused Mr Raab of making a flying visit and acting like a thief in the night by not listening to the concerns of people living on the border. Mr Raab said he remained confident of getting a good deal. Let's get the latest then from our Ireland correspondent Chris Page, who's uh, at Stormont for us this evening. Chris. Yes, Ben, Northern Ireland's at the sharp end of Brexit in so many ways because this is the only part of the UK that has a land border with another EU state. And the future of that border has become the biggest sticking point in the Brexit talks. In particular, a backstop, a guarantee that there won't be any new controls on that border under any circumstances. One of the questions is if uh, border controls are avoided, well, may that mean checks on goods moving between uh, Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK, something the government says would be unacceptable. Well, Dominic Raab was asked about that during his visit here to Stormont. And if you listen carefully, you'll see he didn't definitively rule that out. Look, we've, we are engaged in the negotiation process. Uh, we have made it very clear that whether it's the uh, customs regime uh, for the UK as a whole or the wider economic integrity of the UK as a whole, we will not allow any proposals to be accepted that would jeopardise that. And that's the crucial thing here. Of course, we want to maintain frictionless trade with our EU partners, but the internal market within the UK is absolutely crucial too. They're not binary choices. We want to preserve both and also enhance and increase our opportunities for global global trade, which will be good for the UK and good for Northern Ireland too. 
So Mr Raab not giving any definitive guarantees that there won't be any new regulatory checks on goods crossing the Irish Sea. But he did try to strike a very positive note, saying he was confident that he could get a deal that would work for the whole of the UK, including this part of the UK. The government's parliamentary allies, the Democratic Unionists, spoke after meeting Mr Raab. Their leader, Arlene Foster, underlined that for them, they couldn't accept anything that placed trade barriers between Northern Ireland and England, Scotland and Wales. She said that would be an economic catastrophe for Northern Ireland. Sinn Féin, particularly critical, as you'd expect, of the Brexit sec Secretary. They're passionately opposed to Brexit. The Sinn Féin leader, Mary Lou Macdonald, accused Mr Rabb of coming like a thief in the night and saying that Tories seem to come to visit this part uh, of the UK undercover. So she said that the meeting with Mr Rabb was direct and she said there had to be a backstop. But exactly what that backstop will look like, well, that still uh, isn't clear right at this moment. Uh, Chris Page, thank you very much indeed. At Stormont, and well, let's talk a bit more then about uh, the so-called backstop, uh, which does remain one of the key unresolved issues in the current withdrawal negotiations. Let's get a bit more uh, context on all of that from our reality check correspondent, uh, Chris Morris, who's here with me now. Um, so, Chris, as we've been hearing, already, the Irish border question remaining the key stumbling block in these, whole, in these Brexit talks, and, and this issue of the backstop in particular. Yeah, and we hear from Belfast there just the political complexity. In the negotiations which have been taking place still quietly behind the scenes in Brussels over the last few days, the most difficult issue, I think, has been uh, customs rules in particular in, in Ireland and Northern Ireland. And so for the last few weeks, the two sides, the UK and the EU, have been looking into the idea of a temporary UK-wide customs union. So not a customs union just for Northern Ireland, but for the whole of the UK. In other words, that would mean no customs checks between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, but also no customs checks potentially down the Irish Sea between Northern Ireland and the rest and, and Great Britain. So um, the, the negotiation has basically boiled down to what can you say in the withdrawal agreement that's being negotiated at the moment in legally binding language to say we are definitely going to have this temporary customs union in the future. The more detail you can put in, the more guarantee you can say this is actually going to happen, then the less likely it is you're going to have to fall back on the Northern Ireland only backstop which the UK is saying is, would basically sort of threaten the constitutional integrity of the country. So all these negotiations going on behind the scenes, possibly as we speak, what are the chances of a deal in the coming weeks? Well, both sides want it, and I think there has been progress made, but there are plenty of potential pitfalls as well. One of the problems is, if you're going to call it a temporary customs union, then the UK is saying, well, that means it has to be time-limited. Uh, the EU say no it can't be time limited so the search is on for some sort of mechanism for the UK to be able to say there is a way for us to extricate ourselves from this but at the same time for the EU to be able to say our promise that the backstop operates under all circumstances still holds. There are other issues, fishing is an issue that's come up in the last couple of days, been quite a few press reports. If there's a cu temporary customs union then um, it would give uh, the UK fish producers access to the EU market. A lot of EU countries are saying, well, hang on, we haven't yet negotiated access to your fishing waters. So it becomes more and more complicated. And of course, even if you can do a deal, there's the big problem of what happens here in our parliament. There's got to be a vote both in the European Parliament and in Parliament in Westminster. And you talk to pretty much anyone at Westminster and they say they simply don't know the numbers are so tight, what deal might be able to get through Parliament here? Through and if there is a long-term trade deal that, that keeps the Irish border, presumably then the whole backstop debate starts to fall away? If there's a long-term trade deal that creates frictionless trade that keeps the border as open as it is now, then the, then the backstop becomes irrelevant. But the problem with frictionless trade is it can't be broadly frictionless. It can't be as frictionless as possible. It has to be frictionless full stop. And if you talk to senior EU officials, people involved in the negotiations from other capitals as well, the only way they can see to get genuinely frictionless trade is for the UK, the whole of the UK, or Northern Ireland to stay in the single market and the customs union. And so that kind of takes us back to where we started. Uh, the, U the, the Prime Minister has ruled out that as an option. Uh, Brexiteers clearly are very unhappy about that. And that kind of is the long-term elephant in the room. If they agreed, if there was an agreement on a temporary customs union, could it become so problematic that in effect it would become the permanent solution? Chris Morris, thank you very much indeed. Chris Morris there from Reality Check.
The Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab says he's confident he can get a good deal for all corners of the United Kingdom. He was speaking during his first official visit to Northern Ireland to discuss the issue of the Irish border, which has become the main sticking point in the Brexit talks. Our Ireland correspondent Chris Page is at Stormont. Chris, dare I ask, any progress? Yes, Fiona, Dominic Raab has visited the part of the UK which is in many ways at the sharp end of Brexit because of the land border with the Irish Republic and the future of that frontier has become a major difficulty in the negotiations. There's disagreement in particular over a backstop, a guarantee that no matter what there aren't going to be any border checkpoints. The EU says that if that aim can't be achieved through a new free trade deal, well then Northern Ireland should continue to follow European rules on the movement of goods. The government says that's not acceptable because it may result in new trade barriers between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Now here at Stormont, Dominic Rabb was asked whether he would definitively rule out any new checks on goods coming here from Great Britain. And interestingly, he didn't definitively answer, but he did repeat that the government would not allow a new border along the Irish Sea. The Democratic Unionist Party, the government's parliamentary allies, repeated their bottom line that the whole of the UK had to leave the EU together. Sinn Féin accused Mr Rabb of making a fly-by-night visit for a box-ticking exercise. Across that largely invisible border in Dublin, there seemed to be a more positive tone at a meeting of British and Irish ministers. They said a Brexit deal was possible within weeks, but also that there was plenty more work to be done. And the Irish government said it was up to the UK to step up efforts in the talks. Chris Page at Stormont, thank you. Political. Now the Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab has visited Northern Ireland for talks with politicians and business leaders. The DUP leader, Arlene Foster, said she hopes a deal on the deadlocked Irish border question was close. But Sinn Féin accused Mr Raab of making a flying visit and acting like a thief in the night by not listening to the concerns of people living on the border. Well, Mr Raab said he remained confident of getting a good Deal. Well, our island correspondent, Chris Page, is at Stormont uh, for us. Um, so, a lot of commentary on both sides here. Any progress? Has there been any progress made? Well, there's certainly no sign of a breakthrough, a definitive breakthrough on this issue, which has really become the most difficult one in the Brexit negotiations, how you avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland. Dominic Rabb came here to Northern Ireland today. He visited two ports, Larne and County Antrim, and Warren Point docks in County Down, close to the border with the Irish Republic, to meet business people. Then he came here to Stormont to meet uh, the main political parties and the two biggest parties in Northern Ireland, the Democratic Unionists and Sinn Féin, as you've been saying, see Brexit very, very differently. The DUP, whose 10 MPs are keeping Theresa May in power at Westminster, are passionate Brexiteers. They say their bottom line, though, is there can't be anything agreed as part of the Brexit deal that means there'd be trade barriers between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Sinn Féin, on the other hand, passionately opposed to Brexit. Sinn Féin President Mary Lou Macdonald said that she'd had a direct meeting with uh, Dominic Raab and uh, she said that the uh, Brexit secretary had come here like mm, a thief just, in the um, night for uh, a fly-by-night visit, she said, for a box-ticking exercise. So certainly the two political parties, the two main political parties, aren't going to see uh, Brexit in the same way uh, at all. There was a slightly more positive tone, though, at a meeting of British and Irish ministers across that largely invisible border in Dublin. Where they said that they thought a deal was possible within weeks and there had been movement on the border issue. However, they did make the point that there was still plenty more work to be done and the Irish government are saying that as far as they're concerned, it's up to Britain to step up efforts in the talks. Chris Page, thank you very much.